Good morning everybody, how are you? Welcome to day three in the Toxin series. So Toxin series video number three. Um, I've taken you through some of the ideas around toxins and insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, um, endocrine disruptors, the impact of heavy metals, all of the, what these have on your hormones, plus how they can inhibit you from losing weight. Today I wanted to talk about something, a condition that's very, very important and it's, it's a growing condition and I think it's treated, um, it's not treated how it should be and that's polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I did mention yesterday about polycystic ovarian syndrome, how polycystic ovarian syndrome is really misrepresented. It's misrepresented because we're told it's this syndrome and we have a feeling that we know how it acts, you know, you're high testosterone or um, you've got um, multiple cysts on your ovaries or maybe you've got an irreg irregular cycle. But really polycystic ovarian syndrome should be broken down into different conditions because it is so very, very different how it appears in different women, depending on their genetic makeup, depending on where they live, depending on where their diet, depending on their stress levels, everything that's going on for them. But what's not different is how the hormones are really acting in the body. So it could be a different causative factor, but what's actually going on in the body is slightly different. So this is very important for women that are dealing with polycystic ovarian syndrome because what works for somebody else really might not be working for you. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is, is kind of categorized as one of three, two of three of the following. You either have um, irregular periods, um, polycystic ovaries, which is multiple cysts, nine, 10, 12 or more that have come up in a scan, or you have androgen dominance. But we know now, well, I know now when I've done multiple tests on clients, that polycystic ovarian syndrome is so very complex. It can come with endometriosis. It can come with high or low testosterone. It can come with high or low estrogen. Thyroid can be implicated. But here I wanna to talk to you about insulin. I wanna to talk to you about the different variations of polycystic ovarian syndrome and the importance of toxins because we are now seeing that even on the perfect diet, even on um, tr doing everything that you, you should be doing to reduce your insulin resistance, re insulin levels and, and support your blood sugar, your hormones are still going crazy and polycystic ovarian syndrome is still a condition. So I wanna just break it up for you, quickly just break it up for you and kind of go through some of the different variations first and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into what's going on and what you should be looking out for. So we've, we've got a number of different symptoms and everybody is different with these certain symptoms. So we have um, pimples, we have blackheads, we have anxiety, we have long, we have painful periods, heavy painful periods, longer cycles of 34, 40, 50 days, shorter cycles of 26 days, 21 days, uh, hair growth, some women get hair loss on the head, some women get hair growth around the mouth, um, on the nipples, on the stomach area, on the cheeks, um, some women put on weight, other women lose weight, um, some women get um, multiple cysts, you know, when you have a scan, you might have um, more, more, more cysts on the scan instead of just one follicle, which is a corpus luteum that should be going through its cycle, so you might have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, even more cysts, so the more cysts you have, the more you know there's a hormonal issue going on locally um, at your ovaries, um, some women will have a larger cyst, that might rupture, some women might have issues with their immune system, candida, parasites, bacteria, um, and some women might get that mid-cycle pain around ovulation, and then of course there's all the fertility problems. So you can see there's a huge amount of symptoms that can, can fall into these hormonal dysregulations that then fall under the umbrella of polycystic ovarian syndrome. One of the ones that I see most often is where there's androgen dominance, with estrogen dominance. So that's testosterone dominance with estrogen dominance. And this means that all your four hormones are kind of being funneled into testosterone and they're being funneled into estrogen. So you might still have a cycle, but what you'll tend to do is you'll have some of the um, androgen dominance in, in symptoms like elevated um, testosterone that accompanies 
acne or you might have hair growth or you might have longer periods but then you might also have heavy painful periods you might also have sore painful breasts you might also have anxiety um, that goes along with the along with a high estrogen in this condition you might also find that you swing from um, endometriosis to polycystic ovarian syndrome so you kind of swing between the two in this really uncomfortable symptom picture because you have you're, you're trying to treat the polycystic ovarian syndrome and then it kind of swings into the endometriosis and the elevated estrogen. So that one can be a very um, uncomfortable picture and you can have both um, polycystic ovaries along with fibroids, ovarian cysts, um, thickening of the endometrium tissue. There's also your androgen dominance with your low estrogen. Now this will affect women and they will be the women that have those really long, long cycles. Maybe you don't even get a period at all. You've got high DHEA, high um, testosterone. Maybe you've got good muscle mass. Maybe you've got energy, um, but you never have a period um, or your periods every few months. Or when you do get a period, it's kind of scanty. You might also have a few of the symptoms, like maybe a little bit of hair growth, but generally you might feel healthy. It's just the issue you've got is fertility and, and no period, but you feel quite good in yourself. And that can be that high testosterone along with uh, um, low estrogen. If that comes with low progesterone, then you will have more symptoms. So you might have more symptoms of anxiety. You might have more symptoms of um, of acne, that kind of thing. But progesterone can kind of buffer these two hormones. And so you don't feel that kind of severe symptom picture um, with the low estrogen and the high testosterone. Um, then you've also got, um, what was the one I want? Um, the metabolic kind of syndrome. So the metabolic kind of syndrome of having elevated testosterone. So elevated testosterone along with maybe elevated cortisol, your stress hormone, and then also with hyperinsulinemia. And this one is hugely indicated when there is a toxin buildup. So this is a biggie. This is one to really look out for. This is for those women that, this is for you where you've got your androgen excess. So you might have um, hair growth, you might have fertility problems, you might have acne, you might have hair loss on the head. Um, you might have mid-cycle pain, but then you've also got these symptoms of high cortisol. So you've got more weight gain around the middle, insulin resistance, sugar cravings, carb cravings, really find it difficult to lose weight. Um, maybe there's high cholesterol as well. Leptin resistance, so you'll be craving food all the time. You may not be satisfied. Um, along with insulin resistance, you get your bloods done and high triglycerides as well. And this one is really indicated when we look at the diet and the diet's kind of being, cl kind of being cleaned up. But when we've got that real super hyperinsulinemia, we're looking at those toxins. Remember yesterday, if you watched yesterday, I talked about how heavy metals and how endocrine disruptors and advanced glycation end products, all of these are toxins, and I'm gonna just run through them again in a moment, that will cause hyperinsulinemia. And what hyperinsulinemia will do is it will funnel your hormones like DHEA, um, progesterone, pregnenolone. It will funnel those hormones into your testosterone and maybe into your estrogens and also down to your cortisol. So you've kind of like all of your hormones at the bottom of this hormone cascade are really elevated, but those hormones keeping you balanced and calm are actually on the low end. The higher your in insulin is, the higher those hormones, those negative hormones will be, the more symptoms you will get. And then remember we talked about tomorrow, the higher some of your hormones are and the higher your cortisol, cortisol is, the more difficult it is for you to detox those chemicals and those toxins. Your body and your metabolic system starts to shut down. This is a symptom picture of those women that find it so difficult to lose weight with polycystic ovarian syndrome. They might just eat a salad every day or just have a green smoothie every day, but they find it so very, very hard to lose weight. And a lot of these women with that kind of symptom, those hormones might be slightly obese and it's very difficult to shift those, shift those um, kilos, very, very difficult. And so we're looking at that toxic load here. That's a really important factor to, to look at. This is where those toxins really come into play. They slow your metabolic system down. And we know that around one to four people, who women who have 
polycystic ovarian syndrome also have high thyroid bodies and that takes antibodies and that takes me on to the last sort of symptom picture for polycystic ovarian syndrome again this one also indicates some kind of involvement with heavy metals with toxins bacteria or parasite and that's polycystic ovarian syndrome where you've also got the thyroid implicated as well. So we've got um, autoimmune conditions, we've got low thyroid. So what will happen here is you'll most likely have low progesterone coupled with elevated androgens, but your thyroid is also low. So you'll have elevated antibodies. When you've got this picture of sort of polycystic ovarian syndrome, so when you've got either high antibodies or you've got an irregular period or you've got um, cysts, multiple cysts on your ovaries, what you'll also find if you have got this thyroid picture is there's a real underlying issue why, as, as to why you've got polycystic ovarian syndrome, as to why your hormones are going a little bit crazy. This underlying issue can be internal, can be a parasite, it can be f candida, it can be fungal, maybe it's Lyme disease, maybe it's external, so it can be actually mold that's driving this, or it can be toxins, external toxins. So if you're one of these ladies that have one of those symptoms, you've got multiple cysts on your ovaries, you've got very irregular periods, or you know you've got elevated testosterone levels, you've got the hair growth or you've got the acne, coupled with low thyroid or thyroid antibodies, then you know the underlying issue is a parasite or toxins in your environment or exposure to mold. So it's very important to, to know because it's polycystic ovarian syndrome is bracketed into this one, one thing and you either have to have multiple cysts, irregular periods or high testosterone. But once we start to break it down and look at actually what's going on with the rest of your hormones, we can understand where you need to focus. So does that kind of make sense for you? I, I, hope, I've, I hope I've made it clear in terms of you can either be looking at um, your insulin levels, definitely looking at your insulin levels and your hyperinsulinemia, but looking at that kind of underlying cause, you know, where are the toxins coming from? Is it actually mold exposure? Is it an underlying endotoxin so endotoxins are caused because either your liver cannot detoxify properly you've got a parasite you've got candida you've got a condition called mthfr um, maybe you've got um, lyme disease or maybe you've and so the, this is what causes those endotoxins and those endotoxins can be very insidious because we may not be able to identify them and so that's when you have to go a little bit further and try and figure out actually what's going on so those endotoxins as well will raise your insulin they will cause that hyperinsulinemia and then that will drive again the testosterone to elevate in some women the estrogen to elevate and in some women the cortisol to elevate so can you see how it's just kind of this continual cycle this is why it's super important with polycystic ovarian syndrome to try and figure out what your personal picture is what is really going on so normally with polycystic ovarian syndrome we say the first thing you need to focus on is your diet and that's correct and for those women that just have um, maybe elevated testosterone or they have blood glucose issues working on their diet will sort that out so you work on a diet three to four meals a day stabilize your blood sugar take out sugar take out a lot of fruit you have um, you take out high sugar grains and refined carbohydrate and that leaves you with a diet that's really suitable to balance out your blood sugar and for some women that works but a lot of women are left still with unanswered questions they're left with symptoms they're left with issues with infertility. So then you need to go and have a look at, okay, what else is going on? Is there some stress? Because we know that stress will cause um, um, overfunction of pituitary, and that means that you have that kind of ratio of luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone will be out as well. And we know that stress causes an imbalance between testosterone and estrogen as well. So looking at your stress levels. Then looking and making sure that your liver is metabolizing everything properly and you haven't got those endotoxins happening. So 
is your liver function working? Do you have any uric acid in your blood? Do you ever have any ammonia in your blood results? Is your homocysteine elevated? What's, you know, what's going on with your liver? Do you have high cholesterol? Is your, liver, is your liver functioning properly? And if it's not, then doing some nice liver cleansing tactics is actually going to help your symptoms here. So doing things like dandelion, doing things like globe artichoke, doing things like glutathione, um, St. Mary's thistle. Doing all of those will just support your liver to excrete those endotoxins effectively, you know, getting them out of your body, and that's very important here. And then lastly, just looking at your exposure to toxins externally once you've worked internally. So um, I mentioned yesterday, and I just actually printed out a couple of studies today. Um, I've got a couple of studies here that I was looking at, um, and this is another um, n another. Um, pathology of how polycystic ovarian syndrome can actually can actually emerge. So definitely, we know from these studies, we've actually they've actually had a look, and they've identified that women, when you're pregnant, if you're exposed to really high um, advanced glycated end products. Now remember from yesterday, they're ages. These are what cause um, more aging. They cause cancer. They cause heart disease. They cause all of these issues. And so if you're pregnant and you're exposed to ages, and we know we get those in meat that's overcooked, barbecued meat, um, uh, fried meat, highly grilled meat, chips, you know, hydrogenated oils, crisp chips, hydrogenated oils and chocolates. If you're exposed to those and you're pregnant, there looks like the, that that will start to change your child's endocrine system before they're even born. And that will leave them um, genetically predisposed to getting conditions um, such as polycystic ovarian system, uh, syndrome or endometriosis. This is why a healthy diet while you're pregnant is so important and detoxing and cleansing before you decide to get pregnant is really important for, for your baby's health. Oh, thank you, Renee. Thank you so much for listening. Um, so this is what these studies have shown and they've also shown that um, another study, where what's, I haven't written down where I got this study actually, but another study has shown that also women that are insulin resistant during pregnancy, they have insulin problems maybe because of diet or exposure to toxins, also their children have more, um, they're more predisposed to having these conditions, polycystic ovarian syndrome and hyperinsulinemia. And thirdly, EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, really important, and again I talked about this yesterday, um, it shows that women that are exposed to these, you're more likely to have hyperinsulinemia. And so hyperinsulinemia, again, is where basically the insulin in your body is elevated. You might be getting things like keratosis pilaris. You might be getting acne. You might be getting hair growth. You might be getting moles or freckles or that kind of thing. The insulin is high, and that drives your hormones to turn into testosterone and estrogen. Um, so when we look at NEDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, these are flame retardants, these are BPAs, these are phthalates, um, these are pesticides and herbicides. Um, what does it say? So you're more likely, when you're exposed to EDCs, it says um, this will contribute to polycystic ovarian syndrome and also type 2 diabetes. So this is... This is Really interesting because then it's also telling us that type 2 di diabetes, those that maybe have been, um, um, had, have got diabetes later in life, there could be an issue with exposure to chemicals. So these chemicals um, internally or externally. So I wanted to just talk about this today with polycystic ovarian syndrome because it's not often as simple as just working on the diet. So again, I didn't, I didn't want to overwhelm you, but I wanted to just help you, especially for those of you that may be dealing with fertility problems um, or ongoing issues with your hormones, such as elevated andro androgens, problems with your periods and polycystic ovarian syndrome. And maybe you're finding currently you're working so hard on your diet to try and balance your hormones. You're working really, really hard and you've got the perfect diet, but you just can't seem to be getting a little bit further. So I want you to explore watch my live I did yesterday on the types of toxins and chemicals and also how you can detox them. Yesterday we talked about um, using spirulina as a wonderful detoxifier for these chemicals. Um, making sure that you don't have your exposure is minimized, so minimize your exposure. Um, I told you about Alex Stewart Low Tox course which is kicking off and I'll pop the link in here. 
if you're really serious about looking at it, minimizing your exposure, learning the best cookware to buy, beauty products, cleaning products, that kind of thing, then this course is for you. She's the expert. Um, she's been doing this for a long, long time and she's just released a book, Low Tox Life. So there's so much there. So if you just want to take a little bit further, but in terms of what you can do today, minimizing your exposure, using things like spirulina um, to detoxify and eating lots of polyphenols to help your body to detoxify as well, as well as um, trying to balance out your blood sugar. So polyphenols, you can find them in dark chocolate, you can find them in berries, green tea, um, even black tea, um, raspberries, blueberries, all of those beautiful foods. So just looking at that, but I, I highly recommend chlorella and also spirulina to support your body to detoxify. And then just look at where you might be exposed to these things that are putting up your insulin and dis destabling your blood sugar system and then interrupting your hormone synthesis. So I hope that helped. I did go on for a little bit. It's actually a really complicated topic. So it's really difficult to do in the short amount of time that we have. So I would appreciate feedback and also appreciate any questions of things that maybe weren't clear that I can just help to clear up or anything else you'd like to know that can help. So the idea of this is to help you two things here that the reason I do these lives one is to help you connect those dots between things that might be going on so you might get to a certain place in your in your health journey and think you're not getting any further and you're not sure what to do so I do these in the hope that you might have these little aha moments and can make a few tweaks and secondly I want to try and give you information so you can um, feel empowered to support yourself, support your family and do things yourself. So if there is anything I'm missing or you've got any questions, feel free to pop in them in the comments below and I will get back to you because this is a complicated topic and I understand I can't really go through it in this amount of time, but I really do want to help those of you that are, that are feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed by the whole kind of polycystic ovarian um, umbrella and just break it down for you that it's so different for everybody. Um, so I hope that helped. Hope you found that helpful. Pop your questions below and have a wonderful day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, I'll be on on Tuesday. So I'm coming on. Alex Stewart from Low Tox Life will be on on Tuesday. So if you've got any questions for her, I highly recommend you join that chat. It's going to be on Tuesday at 12 p.m. because she is the expert in terms of the best things to swap out. She's up to date with all the newest fandangled things to bring into your life in terms of low tox. So she's a wealth of knowledge. So I'm really looking forward to that chat. So pop your questions below or join me on Tuesday with Alex Stewart. Until then, bye.